It's really heartbreaking to think how many children there are who are deciding so incredibly early that math is something that's not for them. We would never be satisfied with a child not being able to read, but there's become this cultural attitude that some people can do math and some people can't. When a child doesn't have their own confidence that they can be whatever they want to be, that absolutely breaks my heart. We had a teacher at Wilder Elementary who was doing math programs and math clubs and he was incredibly popular and the clubs were oversubscribed. It wasn't just a place where kids were all high-performing math students, it was a place where everybody did math. There were all of these fabulous things going on, it was a really vibrant math environment and they thought, if we can do this at our school, why can't we do it at other schools? It came down to really changing how people thought about math, their attitudes, behaviors, beliefs. And then we really narrowed down to changing a culture and building a culture of math where people really got excited about it and jazzed about it. It really is something for everybody. It's when kids are playing math games at recess. It's when kids are excited about doing activities hands-on in math time. It's when teachers are taking it upon themselves to move beyond the curriculum, and it's when even the parents want to do the math challenges every month. It's an indescribable feeling when, you, when you've reached a kid or reached a whole class. Or a first grader runs up to me in the hallway, hugs me and says, Mr. Math, Mr. Math. I mean, it's, it's given me this humongous bag of tricks. And I feel like it's just opened, to open some doors for some specific kids who have really been struggling. Explorations of Math started with two schools almost 10 years ago and then there were four schools and then ten schools. We thought we were making a difference. We didn't really have any way of measuring it other than qualitative feedback from parents or teachers or principals. It was very, you know, sort of the mom and pop around my kitchen table. Board meetings were in my home. It was really about year to year for funding. We didn't have a lot of HR happening internally. We wanted to be more than what we were, but we really didn't have the tools to go to the next step. And then we had the opportunity to partner with SVP, which completely changed our organization. They gave a capacity tool to really help identify the areas that really need strengthening within the organization and really built on all of those areas. There's often this sense with funders, well, I can't ask that question because maybe that will make me look like I don't know what I'm doing, or we have a problem, we don't want them to know, you know, we have a problem. And with the SVP, it was completely the opposite. You know, if there's a problem, they say, okay, we've got this problem, can you help us fix it? Instead of trying to paper it over, say, oh, I don't know if we can talk about this problem with our, you know, our, our big funder. I remember at one point, it was actually was a funding issue, and the first call we made was, you know, we're, we're cutting it really close here, and we're not sure what's going to happen after this date. And they talked to us about contingency planning, and it was just an incredible relief to have that educated resource who didn't call and go, oh my God, what do you mean, you know, you're in that spot, just saying, hey, you know, these things happen, and here's what you need to do, and here's how you do it. I think it takes time to do that. It takes time to kind of get to that comfort zone of feeling like you're giving us that advice because you know that's where we need to go. It feels more like a partnership. It feels like a friend I can always reach out to, whether the, the subject is good or bad. They're in there to help us. I've met Greg White, who is the um, head of the Learn Charter School System, and last year we were looking for a speaker for our event, and um, Greg had just been honored by Oprah Winfrey. He was one of six schools that she chose across the country to receive a million dollar grant. And he came out to be the guest speaker and talk about education, and the day before the fundraiser, he spent going around to the schools with him, and when he got to the fundraiser, he got up to the podium and he said, I'm throwing my speech away. I have seen things in the last day that are gonna make me change how I do math in my organization. 
you know, when Greg went to that class, there was a little kid who, at the end of class, for no reason, just is, he's done with his thing and he writes on his thing, math rocks, and he puts it up, you know, and it's like, you know, that's great. SVP played, I think, a very critical role in helping us get to where we are and being able to take advantage of these opportunities. Without the assessment process that we went through and the theory of change, we couldn't market or even sell ourselves outside of the Puget Sound. Who would even listen to us unless we had some kind of backup to say, look, this program works. You want to invest in this. This is going to help your kids. It's going to help your parents. It's going to help your teachers. SVP, they were the really smart board member that we were able to get on. They sat on our board and provided what you hope to get from a board member, which is advice and access and um, information and connections to other people. They invested in us and we invested in them. And when that equal energy and time is put together in a very respectful and professional way, it can really transform organizations and people and lives and it's really powerful.